Sorry for the delay. This is kind of your time. Are you ready?
I'm just keep keeping it. I know. I know. This line says you have texted you. Yeah. And this line says you have texted you. Sorry for delay, the delay without further ado, here's Vagnos Pettersson with a talk on Connect. Round of applause, please. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, we have a magic device over here. Uh, you can see me in the scene. You see that I have connected this light bulb over here. It just turned off. Once again, that's only one of the simple demos we'll uh, uh, do in this uh, presentation. So let's start. Uh, what you saw uh, was just a small example of an application of motion technology. Uh, I use my body, I use my gestures to control a remote device without uh, having any, rem any kind of remote controllers uh, with me. But uh, how all this started? I remember when I was uh, six years old, my father brought uh, this kind of device at home. And uh, it was quite hard to handle this. I mean, we needed to type some uh, odd commands and get uh, the expected actions. Uh, it, was, it was quite hard to use, and uh, we ne you need to remember a lot of stuff in order to use such a computer. This was over 20 years ago, and even more. Uh, later, things uh, became really better, uh, and where a revolution happened. Uh, you needn't uh, use a computer uh, with a keyboard anymore. You could uh, have uh, a mouse, uh, you could have uh, more input devices, and you could see colors and icons. Uh, that was about uh, 15 to 20 years ago. Uh, and you could, uh, m the objects uh, in a graphical user interface could mimic uh, real world examples. Uh, in 2007, Apple introduced uh, an even better and more natural technology touch devices. Touch devices uh, could be handled by a kid uh, three years old without uh, knowing anything about computers. Uh, it was uh, the first natural uh, user interface ever that was made available to the public. But uh, in the meanwhile, you had seen Star Wars, uh, you had seen Star Trek, uh, we had also seen uh, Minority Report, and uh, where, where some uh, guys like Tom Cruise uh, just went into a room, made some uh, strange uh, gestures, and they could handle a computer without a uh, screen, without anything. Uh, everything was projected uh, in the air, and they could uh, move around the windows uh, with gestures and voice. That was something we r we'd really like to have, uh, but uh, we only thought it was fiction. Uh, such things happened only in movies, and uh, really in, uh, no one ever believed that uh, one day it would come true. Uh, this all changed in 2010. In 2010, Microsoft introduced uh, the Kinect device. Kinect uh, is a simple sensor uh, that combines uh, multiple uh, input methods uh, inside it. Uh, this uh, piece of hardware contains uh, a depth image sensor, a raw camera input, 12 microphones, and an infrared uh, camera as well. Uh, you can see that the uh, depth sensor is this one. Uh, the color sensor, the infrared, and 12 uh, microphones in line. Uh, but uh, the real innovation in this uh, piece of hardware uh, was its price. Depth sensor, uh, cameras, and uh, infrared uh, sensors existed uh, many years ago, but they were very expensive. For example, you needed uh, thousands of pounds to buy a depth sensor. 
now everything in this bundle comes together uh, in a rather uh, cheap equipment of only 150 pounds. Uh, you can see it's very spot uh, where all the magic happens. Uh, it's nothing more than a nice combination of different sensors. Uh, of course, Microsoft uh, built a great software along with this device. Uh, so uh, while we had a chip sensor, we also had uh, the best software for controlling bodies, for recognizing uh, uh, joints in our bodies, uh, for recognizing points in our face, and for recognizing voice. Three things that Kinect uh, did quite well. Uh, skeleton tracking refers to uh, body movement and body recognition. This sensor uh, can find out uh, up to 25 joints uh, of my body, uh, head, arms, uh, elbows, uh, feet, uh, legs, and much more. And they can project uh, those points uh, on screen. Moreover, the sensor can uh, determine up to 40 points on my face. Uh, we can find out where my nose is, where my eyes, my eyebrows even my cheeks. And last but not least, uh, the sensor could uh, perform very well as a voice uh, recognition engine. I could speak to the sensor and uh, understand uh, what exactly I was saying. Uh, however, uh, we're not going to make any demo regarding uh, voice recognition because of all this noise over here. Uh, but we're going to uh, see exactly how uh, body tracking and uh, face tracking works. We'll also look at uh, real-world examples and how other companies uh, use this software to enhance their business value. So, you have a chip sensor uh, which can do all the magic. What do you can do with this sensor? Well, let's present our first demo. Uh, excuse me, how can I connect uh, the projector to another window? You know? How can I connect uh, my projector to another window in my laptop? Yeah. Uh, no, I just want to. Can I show the projector on there? I have to do two screens. I want to see this uh, to show this window to display this window. Can click yeah. it. Uh, not my presentation. Yeah, well, okay, we'll I can start. probably do this. Okay, thanks. <laughs> So, this is the input uh, from the sensor device. Uh, in the image over uh, the left, uh, you can see what uh, the raw color image uh, can display. Uh, the right uh, hand side image displays uh, the depth uh, values. And uh, as you can see, uh, it uh, represents uh, with dark colors uh, the faraway points, and with lighter colors uh, the points that are uh, nearest to the sensor. Uh, if we had a little better lighting, we could, you could see much uh, more things. But uh, I think you, you get uh, the point. The sensor can also perform uh, face recognition. I go we're going to see exactly how. So this is me. I can get close. Oh, it works. <laughs> and you could see that uh, the sensor recognized the. Uh, uh, 40, uh, 38 to 40 points uh, in my face. Let's see what uh, some other businesses have done using this uh, piece of software. Uh, Body Labs is a company located in the New York and they perform uh, accurate uh, 3D body scanning. They used to use uh, uh, very expensive equipment to scan, uh, to scan people, and then created uh, their accurate 3D models uh, via this uh, uh, scanning process. 
uh, when they uh, learned about the Kinect, uh, the cost uh, totally fall, and instead of using uh, an expensive uh, 3D scanner, they used only a Kinect device. A person could move around the Kinect device. The Kinect device could recognize uh, the various uh, body points, and then uh, a 3D model was generated. I think we can see a short video of this. The person simply stands in front of a Kinect sensor. They can say capture or uh, use their hands to control the screen. And then a 3D body model is generated. Uh, the real innovation is that uh, they managed to uh, cut down the cost and never use a 3D scanner again. A few minutes ago, I saw another uh, demo using uh, this light bulb. Uh, this is a project uh, we built in Lightbus, and uh, you using uh, only a Kinect device and some uh, specific uh, light bulbs, you can control your whole house using your gestures and voice. Uh, no need to remember where the remote control is, or, uh, uh, where or no need to uh, stand up and turn off uh, the lights. You can do it uh, by sitting on your sofa uh, using your gestures and voice. Actually, my young nephew thinks he's uh, Harry Potter and uses this uh, using a magic wand as well. Uh, so, these, was, uh, these were real examples from uh, real businesses. I mean, they used the Kinect uh, sensor to uh, control the lights, to create uh, 3D models. Other businesses use the Kinect sensor to help uh, people with disabilities uh, recover sooner. Uh, I mean that the Kinect sensor tracks uh, their bodies and uh, tells them where they per whether they perform uh, well on various uh, physical exercises. Uh, companies such as Nike also uh, perform uh, many experiments using uh, the Kinect sensor for their athletes, uh, basketball players and, uh, and models. And uh, today I developed a small uh, uh, robot demo as well. That's a field uh, that uh, it's a very exciting and interesting for me. Uh, so, three years ago, I bought this uh, Lego robot from my local store. Uh, it cost only uh, 200 bucks. Uh, but I control it uh, using I could control it using my PC. I just turned it on. I'm putting it here. And I can now try to control it using my body only. Would you like to stand up and show this? Uh, you can control it uh, using gestures like this to turn it uh, left and right. And you can clap. I'm not touching my PC. You can continue. You can clap and the robot will stop. Do it again. Good. And this was built in only uh, half an hour using a ready-baked uh, Lego brick and the Kinect sensor. Thank you very much. The upload was uh, for the lady. <laughs> uh, so you can really do a lot of magic uh, using uh, robots uh, that are quite uh, cheap, inexpensive, and uh, Kinect device. Uh, you can use uh, Arduino, uh, you can use Tinsy, you can use a couple of other uh, methodologies to uh, control a robot.
and uh, things really become uh, very easy when uh, you know a little of programming to put this uh, all together. Are there any developers in uh, the audience? Oh, quite, quite many. Uh, so if uh, you ever like to develop an application for uh, the Kinect, uh, you can uh, download uh, the free samples. Uh, have you ever made any project using this sensor? Oh, good. Uh, how was your, your experience with this? Oh, cool. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, uh, so you can see the potential, uh, and uh, really interesting is when you combine uh, the software SDK provided by Microsoft with uh, some third-party devices such as this one, or uh, lights, or anything else. Uh, in 2014, I'll publish uh, my third book, uh, which will be about uh, controlling robots using a Kinect sensor. Uh, everyone in this uh, audience uh, can have uh, a free copy of the book just by signing in in the link uh, over there. And we'll also uh, have a few paperback uh, ones for uh, the some uh, two lucky guys. So you can subscribe and get uh, your free book uh, when, uh, uh, when it's published in uh, early 2014. This will actually cover uh, the second generation Kinect device that was announced a month ago by Microsoft. And uh, hopefully, it will let us uh, do a lot more tricks using a more advanced uh, depth sensor than the first generation model. Uh, I would like also to invite you in a couple of hours uh, in the developer workshop I'm performing. Uh, we're going to build a Star Wars game from scratch using virtual lightsabers, uh, Yoda faces, Darth Vader faces, and we're going to fight using our virtual lightsabers. So if you're a Star Wars and Kinect geek, you can join us and learn how to develop your first application from scratch uh, with uh, very little uh, programming knowledge. Let me demonstrate this as well. That's a project uh, we're going to develop. So you can see that I am Yoda. I have my lightsaber. And uh, if someone else would like to come here, uh, you could uh, get the Darth Vader mask and fight using our virtual lightsabers. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> so. Uh, the sensor doesn't track you. Come here. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh. I just cut your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I really don't know who the winner <laughs> might be. <laughs> but uh, it's something we'll develop from scratch in a couple of hours. All this stuff will also be covered in uh, the ebook I provided you with, uh, so you can get it for free. Uh, I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh, we could uh, see some demos again if you like, and uh, we can move on to the questions uh, part. If everyone would like to ask something, feel free to do it now. Yeah, but sure. Uh, you need to take the microphone. Okay, I didn't see where it was Mark. Uh, I was wondering, I see that you're on the Mac, I see that you have Windows on it. 
I was wondering, uh, and it's an Xbox thing, so of course I understand it's a Microsoft thing. Yeah. What, what <laughs> if I want to run it on my Raspberry? What do I do? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I cannot hear you very well, what, but... What, how do I run it on my Raspberry? That obviously does not run Windows. Uh, when you do not run Windows? Yeah. Uh, you can do this on a Mac as well. I'm a Windows developer. I uh, worked uh, for Microsoft uh, for but Linux then. many years. Yeah, you can use Linux as well. Can you? Yeah, of course. Oh, interesting. Then. You probably need to install a different SDK, but you can do all this magic using a Linux uh, operating uh -huh. system. No problem. Ah, okay. That was... Yeah, that of course. Interesting. You simply download some different drivers and different uh, programming tools, but uh, it's all... Uh, no, I just assume yeah. Microsoft, you, you know. You can use it. <laughs> oh, I, I, I am used to Microsoft Technologies because I worked there mm. for uh, quite many years, so uh, I like Windows. Okay, I cannot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I admit I it. <laughs> I understand. I just want to know because it's a Microsoft thing, so I assume they of course. are close uh, it's a, it Actually, it's an open platform. Uh, the sensor was developed by a company named PrimeSense in Israel. And Microsoft uh, built the software, the, house, uh, the hardware was built by an Israeli company. And a uh, proper SDK for many operating systems exists, so you can download the one of your uh, preference. Perfect, thank you. Thank you too. <laughs> There's a guy behind you. I think you've part answered the question, but are you an MVP? MVP, no. Okay. I was working there uh, as a software engineer, I, I haven't been an, M an MVP, no. You probably should be. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Over there. Hey, thanks for, the thanks for the talk. Can you just give us a sense of the level of abstraction the Kinect SDK provides? Is it more gesture-based? So it's more like uh, when you develop for a mobile phone, you have swipes and kind of like, you know what I mean? Or is it that you have to like uh, calculate deltas and kind of define your own gestures? How, how much abstraction is there in the SDK? A very nice question. Uh, well, it depends on uh, what project uh, you are building. Uh, the SDK provides you with the tools to determine uh, the points of uh, the skeleton of the body and uh, the points of the face, as well as some voice recognition mechanism. Uh, these are provided out of the box. Uh, you can get them uh, very easily using uh, the functions provided by the SDK. Uh, there are also some uh, very nice open source projects uh, where you can, uh, which you can use for building gestures, postures, uh, custom movements, and much more. Uh, now, if you want to mess uh, with uh, 3D and more advanced stuff, you probably need to know a little uh, uh, algebra, maths, uh, and stuff like this. Uh, it's not that difficult. Basic uh, algebra is uh, quite easy to use with uh, uh, a Kinect device. Uh, but it uh, strongly depends on uh, what project you are building. Okay, thanks. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the guys at Body Labs, uh, they use the 3D capability, so it, uh, indicate it uh, incorporated a, a really lot of math. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you, too. Hi, uh, you mentioned the second generation Connect. I was wondering if there will be a new SDK released with that, and if so, what kind of feature... Uh, what kind of new features are we expecting? Uh, I don't know, know any inside info <laughs> about the second generation Kinect. I only know what uh, has been announced. Uh, there will be surely be a more accurate uh, depth sensor and a camera with uh, much uh, higher resolution. This means that uh, the body tracking will be even faster, in less than uh, half a second, for example. And uh, I think there will be an advanced uh, infrared uh, sensor as well. But I, do, I really do not know any more about uh, any more inside info about the new Kinect. Hello, sorry. Um, do you have an like? Are you able to use non-humanoid sort of shapes? So I, I cannot. I sorry. cannot hear you. Sorry. Is there, there's a noise over there? <laughs> are you able to use any non-humanoid shapes? So I want to use like a robotic arm and use the Kinect to kind of. Oh, sense that, that's where it nice. Is. Uh, well, uh, the Kinect sensor provides you with the tools to recognize mm. uh, human bodies. Uh, but uh, you can also get uh, the values from the depth sensor. So it's very easy to determine uh, shapes, uh, objects, uh, for example, uh, using uh, any techniques such as OpenCV, EMG, UCV, stuff like this. Uh, you can very easily uh, integrate it uh, with a depth sensor and determine which objects are near, far, and what their shape is. Sorry? Am I able to apply, like, a, you know, you had the skeleton applied to the human? 
Yeah. Am I able to do something similar? Or do I effectively have to rebuild that from scratch? Uh, that would uh, would require a lot more uh, knowledge and a lot more algebra. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite yeah. difficult. You can do it, of course. You can use the Kinect sensor as uh, any other uh, depth sensor. So if you get the values, uh, you can uh, produce uh, the results you want. But this, uh, what you describe, requires a really lot of work oh, to be done. Yeah. <laughs> Just to comment to the question before, uh, I work for Microsoft and there's quite a lot of information in the public domain on YouTube particularly showing what the next sensor will do. So it'll give you things like emotion of the face, so it can figure out are you happy, sad, engaged, not, all those kind of things. Uh, but have a look on YouTube, there's heaps of information. Uh, sorry, what? Uh, I didn't uh, get the, your question. Sorry, I was just giving a bit of information for the previous question. Oh, okay. There's a lot of Thank information you. on YouTube. Seeing emotion in someone's face and the sensor understanding the meaning is uh, quite Yes, they, they somehow measure uh, how the muscles move, but I do not know any more information about it. It was a really nice demo presented uh, by Microsoft, but I do not know how this will be integrated into an SDK and how we're going to use it for our own apps. Hopefully there will be a much better SDK. don't know. <laughs> Are there any other questions from the audience? Round of applause, please, for Vagnos. Thank you very much. Galileo will be on a break until 2 o'clock after, after lunch. So at 2 o'clock, please join us back for Nick Irving. He'll be giving us a talk on the potential of sculptures, 3D print, and animation. Thank you very much.